So in terms of who we are and introductions, so I'm Cassie Pines. I work in the HR department here at CBH along with my colleague Emma. And to my right, I have Kelly here from our marketing and communications team. And then we have three lovely employees from our operations team who are here to provide some more insights into Harvest. So I'll let them introduce themselves. Hey guys, I'm Bart Trebenin. So I um, am a terminal supervisor at the Geraldton Terminal. Um, I originally started with CBH back in 2012, I think it was, as a Harvest casual when I was 16 years old. Um, and after that, I came back every year and it was a um, good way to get me through uni. Um, and then after I finished uni, I, was, I did a harvest and I thought, I don't know what I really want to do. And then I was luckily enough offered a, a full time position as an RPO. Um, and I had the opportunity to do that for a couple of years. And then I um, moved my way up to Perth um, at our forest field site and I um, became a specialist in all things grain quality, which then led me to Geraldton, where I was responsible for all things sampling and grain quality at the Geraldton terminal for our shipping, and um, which then leads me to now as a terminal supervisor, which is all things shipping and our staff up there. So, yeah. Um, so my name's Katie. I work in the operations division as well. Um, so similar to Bart, started as a harvest casual um, and have been working with CVH for 15 years. Um, so predominantly my roles have been in administration um, within the ops division and um, predominantly regionally based as well within the wheat belt. Um, so a vast um, majority of my time has been spent um, working on recruiting and managing um, our harvest casual um, process. So um, predominantly that's been throughout the Kunana zone um, and through the central wheat belt. Um, and yeah, happy to answer any questions relating to that at the end. Evening everyone, I'm Luke Rushby. Um, so I started with CBH back in 2011 when I was 16 as well, same as Bart. Um, so I started to have Harvest Casual, didn't want to go back to school, so kind of stayed on um, for the next two years as just a casual. Became a permanent working on the game truck as an office order, which then I went on as a full-time receiver point operator for the next eight years. I then left there and went to Quinana Fertilizer for six months, and which has led me to Wongan Hills as the operations coordinator, looking after that area uh, with logistics and scheduling and things like that. Brilliant. Thanks, guys. Uh, I've noticed in the comments that someone has asked if we can increase the volume. The volume is at the maximum at the moment. However, we will ensure that we can talk as loudly and as clearly as possible so that you are able to hear us. So on the screen, you can see a little bit about our agenda today and what it is that we will cover and discuss. As I mentioned, please put any questions or comments that you have in the chat box, and then we will address those at the end. And I'll now hand it over to Kelly to tell us a little bit more about CVH. Let's can see. All right, so who is the CVH group? Um, so for those of you who don't know, CVH stands for Cooperative Bulk Handling and CBH is Australia's largest cooperative and we're also a leader in the Australian grains industry. Um, as a cooperative, we are proudly owned and controlled by 3,600 WA grain growing businesses, um, just like the family in this photo that you can see here. So our purpose is to sustainably create and return value to WA grain growers, both current and future. And our storage and handling system currently receives and exports around 90% of the WA grain harvest each year um, and is regarded as one of the best in the world. So I'll now hand over to Bart, who will uh, run through what harvest is like here at CBH. Hey guys, the most important part left to me. <laughs> Alrighty, so what does harvest look like at CBH? So um, CBH is spread across a majority of WA from Benua now north uh, to Beaumont in the south and Albany in the east, uh, west, my apologies. Um, so we manage our sites across regional WA where our growers will deliver the grain um, that they harvested. Okay, um, each year CBH recruits harvest casuals to help our sites move. Okay, this is getting growers in and out of the site um, safely, quickly 
and just so they can get back to harvesting. OK, last year was a very uh, monumental year for us. Um, we broke our um, previous record and we received 21.3 million tonnes of grain. Um, in doing so, we need needed about 2000 harvest casuals to help us do it. And without the harvest casuals, um, the job wouldn't get done. So that's enough grain to fill Optus Stadium 17 times. OK, so here's just a quick video. We might have um, some sound issues with this one, but um, basically this video will um, depict what it's like um, the process at harvest time. It will show um, grain coming into site, out of site, um, and just all the different machinery and um, processes that we do. So enjoy. OK, guys, I hope you enjoyed that little video. It just gives you a little insight to what we do here at CBH. OK, so um, the big question is, when does harvest start? So depending on where you are um, placed or you apply to be, harvest can start at different times. OK, so a lot of it is weather dependent um, and when harvest, because that determines when harvest growers start harvesting the crop. OK, um, so due to that, um, it's very unpredictable and we can't predict a certain start date. We can definitely give you that um, date range, but not a accurate start date. OK, um, and yes, the start dates will vary between the zones you go to and um, not all employees um, will commence on the same day. Um, during harvest time, there's a few things that might delay harvest or provide you with a day off or two, and that's um, predominantly weather. So if you get a lot of rain, um, the growers will stop harvesting for a few days. So that means um, no grain to bring into the bin, therefore um, no work at that stage and harvest fans. So when it's too hot and windy, um, the growers aren't allowed to actually harvest because it um, poses a big risk to fires and stuff like that. So um, if they're not harvesting, um, there's no grain coming into the bin either. And depending on the season, the length of work will um, vary. So um, it's hard to say how this year is looking just yet, but Obviously, last year was a very big season and there was a lot of work involved. So fingers crossed we have another big one like that. I'll just be having some audio issues. Um, if you guys could let us know if if you can hear us OK by just giving us a thumbs up um, in the reactions there. Brilliant. OK, thanks, guys. Sorry, we'll, we'll keep on moving. Cool. Um, so um, CBH is very safety focused um, and safety is everyone's responsibility and it's also your responsibility to make sure everyone around you is also being safe. OK, some hazards on our site include noise, grain dust, moving machinery, tailgates, manual handling and heat fatigue. So it's very important we wear our PPE, which is our personal protective equipment. Okay, some examples of our um, PPE. Uh, um, listed here. So every uh, harvest casual on their first day will uh, um, will receive um, the following from their um, site supervisor. So that is high vis shirts, gloves, hat, safety glasses, earplugs, sunscreen, and fly nets. Please note you will need to supply your own long pants and steel cap safety boots. So, um, traveling to sites. This is really important to be wary of guys. So you are responsible for getting yourself to and from your assigned site for work each day. Many of our sites are very remote, so you need to be prepared. Um, sometimes these road, the roads might be unpredictable. You might need to go to a remote site, which means taking a gravel road. So it's very important that you plan prior to com um, coming to site. So by do we can do so by advise 
um, your site supervisor where you are travelling from and your expected time of arrival, just so they can check in on you if um, you might be a bit delayed or, um, uh, yeah. Never drive while fatigued, so plan your trip in advance to ensure you stop for breaks. Um, never rush to get to your destination. Um, ensure you bring enough supplies, food and water for your trip. Ensure your car is roadworthy and you have a plan in place for any potential risk. For example, a flat tire or a breakdown. Well, I'll just um, uh, we'll jump over to Luke and he'll go through our CBH locations. That's far. So CBH broken up into five different zones. Um, so CBH is yeah, located across five zones. So in the right, we have Geraldton in the yellow, Granada North in the brown, Granada South in the blue, Albany in the green, and then Esperance in the purple. As you can see in the picture, all those little black dots uh, represent sites in each different area. Um, and then the, the black bolded dots with the circles around them represent a terminal or a district office. Um, so some of our receival sites are very remote and are a long distance from the nearest town. So you will need to bring enough supplies to last you at least one week in the event that you work six days out of seven. If offered a site placement, you'll be provided with information regarding local towns and available services in the area that you are placed. So in the Geraldton zone, so last harvest, Geraldton received over 3.9 million tonnes of grain. So we have Area 1, Area 2, Area 3, and then Geraldton Terminal, which is the Geraldton Port. Please note that there's no accommodation provided at the Geraldton Terminal, and placements generally commence in that zone early October. Moving south, we have the Cronulla North Zone. So last harvest, Cronulla North Zone received over 3.7 million tonnes of grain. In this, in this zone, we have six different areas. Um, spread out from over to Mora, from Mora over to Narrabeen, and these placements generally commence in mid-October. Kunana South Zone, so last harvest Kunana South Zone received over 2.4 million tonnes of grain. So four different areas, Calabaran down at Corrigan, included in Kunana South Zone is the Kunana Terminal, and currently we do not provide our positions at the Kwinana Terminal or Kwinana Port, but we do provide positions at Metro Grain Centre based out of Forestfield. Placements generally commence in mid-October. Albany Zone, so last harvest, Albany received over 4.3 million tonnes of grain um, from Area 14, Lake Grace, to Area 17, Cranbrook, including the Albany Terminal. Albany Terminal um, does not provide accommodation, and placements generally commence at the end of October. Lastly, but at least, we have the Esperance zone. So last harvest, Esperance received over 3.8 million tonnes of grain. So area 18, Ravensthorpe, down to the Esperance terminal, including Shark Lake, which is just out of Esperance. There is no accommodation provided at Esperance terminal, and placements generally commence at the end of October. Now I'll pass back over to Bar to run through the available roles at CBH. Okay, guys, so when you're going through the application process, um, if you're applying for a country position um, for one of our country sites, you'll apply for the role of receivable point operator. And if you're applying for one of our terminals, you'll apply for the role of plan operator. Within these roles are different responsibilities and different duties, and we'll go through them now. So um, at our country sites, a receivable point operator role, um, they're responsible for the correct and safe unloading and storage of grain. Oversee the unloading of grain from the truck into a grid, which will take the grain to its final area of storage. So you can see that's what's happening in that photo um, there. You can see a truck discharging into the grid and the receivable point operator watching to make sure it's going in there um, at a good pace and um, that it's not making a mess or anything like that. OK, you're also responsible um, for making sure your grid areas are kept clean. Any other um, general site hygiene um, might need attendance because um, with grain, a um, bit of a spoiler alert, it gets really messy. So there's a lot of cleaning up to do, OK? Um, and sometimes you might need to assist moving machinery. So I'm not sure if you saw in the video, you could see um, the grain going onto a stack. So sometimes our receivable point operators will need to move a stacker into position to make sure we're filling um, the storage correctly. Okay, skills required 
Um, you need to be physically fit and able to work long hours outside. Ability to follow directions and work safely. OK, there is a little bit of training involved. So you get to up to one day face to face on site orientation day. So they will be held or hosted across the zone, um, across the state. So different locations, depending on where you're applying for. OK, and this training generally usually commences September to early October. So the next um, duty that falls under um, the receiver point operator position um, that you can apply for is a sampler. OK, so the sampler is responsible for obtaining a representative sample from a grower's truck. Um, this is done by spearing um, the truck with a hydraulic spear. OK, so you might have seen a couple of um, um, there might be some images in this of a um, harvest casual using a hydraulic spear to obtain a sample. OK, you then have to carry out the sample process relevant to that type of grain. So our different grains of barley, wheat, lupins, canola and oats. OK, so with that becomes different parameters and different techniques that you will learn in your training to determine the quality and grade of the commodity. OK, this is really important because this is how uh, this is what determines how much a grower will get paid. OK, once once you've done your analysis, you enter the data into our um, computer system and the truck will proceed to the weigh bridge to capture that gross weight to determine how much grain that grower is delivering. OK, and at the weigh bridge, the truck is weighed. OK, this is recorded in our system. And um, yes, yeah, so skills required, um, obviously attention to detail. Um, once again, you need to um, be able to withstand long, hot, dusty days. OK, and training involved. So there is a um, comprehensive online training course and then a three day practical face to face training. And these dates are usually early September. Cool. And then this is our different role. So our receivable point operator. So remember that's for our country sites and for our terminals. Um, we will hire plant operators. OK, so their duties are predominantly to receive, store, outload and maintain the condition of grain and storage facilities. It's a bit different at terminals because it um, involves a bit of um, inloading of rail from our country receivable sites um, and um, inloading of road from our country road um, well, trucks and of course shipping. OK, skills required once again, attention to detail, physically fit and able to work long hours outside, ability to follow directions and work safely. Um, once again, we do host a training day for our, for our plan operators and um, that's a one day face to face orientation day and this usually occurs September to early October. Cool. Accommodation. So accommodation facilities are available at a majority of our sites and vary from site to site. Terminals do not have accommodation, including Geraldton, Albany and Ashburn's terminals, but CBH will do their best to provide accommodation to the harvest casuals. Free accommodation is basic with communal living on site, shared kitchen, shared living area, shared bathroom and shared laundry. We do provide other types of accommodation with on suites on site as well. CBH supplies fridges, freezers, ovens, microwaves, basic cooking utensils, a single bed, TV in a communal area, cleaning supplies and barbecue areas at some sites. Um, harvest casual employees must supply their own food, bed linen and toiletries. And please make sure you have enough food bed linen and toiletries to last at least a week on these sites. OK, so employment with us. OK, so our hours and conditions. So obviously it's harvest time, so it's going to be hot. And um, with our roles working outside, yes, it's going to be hot, but you have um, it's important to keep hydrated and stuff like that. Dusty, grains dusty, so you have to be able to withstand that and long hours, of course. So some sites may run 12 hour shifts or double shifts. Most of our bigger sites will run double shifts because um, we'll be open later and we'll need the staff to be able to um, accommodate that. OK, so we usually do a split shift there. However, a majority of sites will most likely do 12 hour days, six days a week. OK, that's why it kind of emphasises the importance of being able to pack your food to last that long because you might not get a day off to run to the shops and um, stock up for um, seven days. So. It's important to remember that one. So casual employers are entitled to a 30 minute break every five hours and have a minimum of one day off every seven days. Um, site opening hours, as I said before, 
um, are very weather dependent. So if we do get harvest bands, it's really hot, windy, um, we will, um, like sites may shut and you might get a day off or two there. Um, and if it rains, growers can't harvest when it's too wet. So you might get a couple of days off then. But usually, um, hot tip guys, they're the most exciting days because at that stage you might need a rest. OK, it is expected that the successful candidates will be able to work from start of placement until either the site closes or work is no longer available. So within your application process, if there at any stage you um, need to have a leave date, leaving date, just let um, our team know. Um, and leaving for completing exams is permitted. You just need to make sure you have a really good communication with your site supervisor so they understand when your exams are and we don't want you guys rushing um, up and back from Perth and um, for being fatigued and stuff on the road. So sometimes you might just need to talk to your site supervisor to work out a couple of days off to get your exams done. Also, um, depending on what EBA you might have, um, there's different awards and um, available. So terminal, like for our, our terminals, they have one award and our um, country sites have a different award. But, um, and your pay is dependent on where you work in regards to terminal or country, um, how much experience you have, and um, yeah, so and you will get paid weekly. Um, also, training is all paid for, so your online components to your training will be paid, and also your practical. So, um, so your safety modules, everyone has to do them. Your online training, and they're they're about five point five hours, so they will be paid um, for our on-site RPO and plan operator orientation days. Um, you'll be paid for one of them. I think it's about eight hours and in our inexperienced samplers who will have to attend a three day training course um, that will be fully paid for every day you're there. And you'll also need to complete an approximate eight hour online online training course and that will be paid for. Um, experienced samplers that that may differ as they, um, there's different requirements for them when applying. Well, some additional information. So we have a very strict uh, drug and alcohol procedure. So um, at some stage prior to commencing employment, you will be required to complete a DNA testing, a drunk, dr drug and alcohol testing. OK, um, and during harvest, randomly additional testing may occur. So it's very important that we adhere to that. OK, uh, mobile phones on site. So um, you're not permitted to use your mobile phone on site for anything other than business related use. OK, this is just a um, safety hazard to make sure we're alert at all times. OK, and we have a very strict social media policy, so you need to make sure you're um, using it responsibly, responsibly while employed by CBH. OK, so if when doing so, ensure you uh, are adhering to safety standards, for example, wearing the correct PPE and not um, not um, publishing anything unsafe or unt untoward behaviour. OK, and only authorised spokespersons are permitted to make public comments on behalf of CBH, which applies to all forms of media. So we'll just pass over to Emma to run through our recruitment process. Thanks, Bart. So I'll leave this slide up for a quick moment so everyone can take a look at what the actual process looks like in terms of a timeline. Um, but to give you a bit of an overview, so our applications opened on the 4th of July and they will run um, till about the end of August, if not into early September. We do encourage you to submit your application early, uh, just given we try and push our candidates through as quickly as possible to make sure you're ready for day one as quickly as we possibly can. Um, so we will continue to shortlist those candidates whilst we stay open. Um, but in terms of what our key dates may look like, uh, our, our information session um, which is similar to a group interview. Uh, they'll start commencing in August and will potentially run in through September. Uh, and September will when be when our onboarding and our training will start to commence uh, and then site placements will be from October onwards. So I'll let you guys have a quick look at that one so you can soak in the time frames there. And then now we'll um, move on. So if you're still interested, which I'm hoping you all are, um, head over to our careers website to submit your application. So the application will involve answering quite a few questions, but each of those questions assist us in determining your suitability for the particular zone that you've applied for and for harvest in general. Your application, if it's progressed, you, you may be asked to complete some pre-employment screening and that pre-employment screening will include, include providing proof of eligibility to work in Australia, so your working rights. 
completing a medical declaration form, which is completed via a survey link. Uh, and if required, you may be asked to complete a face-to-face -face physical assessment. However, this isn't required for all people. Every piece of correspondence we send for your application is sent via email. We may follow up with a phone call, but the initial uh, communication will be sent via an email. So please be sure to keep an eye out on your inbox uh, and also on your spam folder because we do find some emails will end up in your junk. So once you have completed all your pre-employment screening, uh, if you're shortlisted, you may be invited to attend an information session or an interview from your chosen zone or site. If you're successful following that information session, you will then be invited to complete some onboarding, which will include completing your personal information, such as your bank account, your super, your tax, and other information we need to be able to make sure we can pay you, uh, as well as online learning. So the online learning that um, Bart discussed earlier, that will also be included in your onboarding. Once your online learning is completed, you'll then be required to complete some on-site training. Again, that on-site training was what we mentioned before, both of which you will be paid to complete. So if you are successful in obtaining a placement, you will receive an offer via email uh, and it may be followed up again with a phone call just to let you know. So you do submit your site preference in your application. And whilst we do our best to give everyone their preference for their site placement, it just depends on site requirements and demand as to whether or not we can actually provide you with that preference. Uh, we will do everything we can to make sure we do put you on that preference, but sometimes it's just not possible. Um, but you can discuss that with your, your contact when you get to that point. Uh, if you are required to start, um, you will be contacted via phone and that will most likely be by your supervisor or someone else uh, in your actual chosen zone. As much as we like to provide you as advance for your notification of placement, it's not always possible for us to do that and sometimes you may be required on very, very short notice, um, but we do try and work with you as much as possible in this space. And if you do have to withdraw your application for any reason at any time, as much as we would be sad to see you go, we do appreciate if you can keep that communication up with the recruitment team, just so we know uh, in terms of numbers and placements, um, and we can offer that placement to someone else if need be. Thanks team. So over to you all now to see if you do have any questions, whether it be about Harvest, CBH, the recruitment process. If you can put those in the chat box and we will address them. I can see that a couple of people have their hands raised. I don't know if that is an accident or if they do have questions. If you do have questions, once again, if you can put it in the chat. Just wait a moment to see if there are any questions. Thanks, Violet. We have a question from Violet. Is there a certain age limit or high school completion requirement to be considered an applicant? M, would you like to answer that one? Yeah, of course. So in terms of the age limit, uh, you need to be 17 as of the 1st of October this year. Um, but other than that, that is the only age restriction that we do have. Um, and there's an absolutely no requirement to um, have any certificates or high school completion. What um, we have a question from Roy. What is the basic hourly rate paid? So I can take that one, Roy. So on one of our previous slides, so the minimum hourly rate is just above $29 an hour. Um, as we mentioned, though, that can vary depending on whether you are based at uh, one of our ports or in our country and also what your experience is. However, the minimum rate is just above $29. We have a question saying, hi, I'm English student and I have a holiday visa September to October. Can I work? Yes, yeah, so um, provided you do have the, the relevant working rights to work um, over here, that's absolutely not a problem. What I would say is submit your application um, and if your availability does align to a certain site or zone, um, they will they'll progress your application. But if 
that uh, doesn't align to anything, they'll definitely let you know. We have a question from Phil about an age limit. I can answer that one. So we do have a minimum age requirement, as Emma mentioned, so that's 17 as of the 1st of October. Yep. yep. Uh, however, we don't have a limit on the other end. Um, so as long as you are fit and healthy and meet our requirements, then there is absolutely no age limit. Now we have another question from Fiona asking, can you apply to be located on site with a friend? Katie, would you like to ask that? Um, yes, so Fiona, within the application um, where there's a commentary box to type in your site preference, there's also an opportunity um, if you're travelling with anyone or wanting to be placed um, with a friend. So you can um, pop that in there and then again, we'll do our best to accommodate that, but by all means, um, put as much information in the application as possible, um, just so we can assess uh, whether our people travelling together, um, particularly if you're sharing things like vehicles, it's helpful to know that um, up front, we can do our best to accommodate that. Thank you. I have another question for you, Katie. Um, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. It is, are there any opportunities starting early December as I am a TAFE student? Sure. Um, so each of the zones will have requirements um, based on when harvest will generally start. Um, so typically speaking, um, December is considered typically quite late for the harvest season. However, I would suggest just still putting in your application with your application um, commencement date that you're available from, and then each of the zones could assess that. Um, if you didn't have a particular preference on the zone you're willing to work at, I'd recommend um, applying for one of the southern zones. So either Albany or Esperance, just as they typically will um, commence a little later. Um, it wouldn't be a guarantee for December, but as the season progresses, uh, we can consider all, um, all application details. Thanks, Katie. So question from Letitia. So she said, are we able to add additional days to our application that we are now unavailable to work as she's had a wedding invitation arrived since she's applied? Emma? Yeah, so um, unfortunately you can't edit your application once you have submitted it, um, but I will pop our um, HR email address into the chat uh, and if, if you just let us know via email what those dates are, we can update your application for you. Thank you. So I have a question from Rod. He said when he was a sampler in the 70s, he climbed into the load and took three samples manually. Is that still the case? Luke, could you like to answer this one? Um, unfortunately, it's not due to health and safety issues. So um, we currently use hydraulic spears to spear the basically take four samples, four spears out of the back of the trailer. So no, we're not allowed in the back of the trailers anymore, but hopefully that answers your question, Rod. Liz has asked, are there any indoor booth positions? Mark, would you like to take that one? Okay, Liz. Um, so our sampling um, sampling position, which falls under the receiver point operator role, that um, is predominantly inside. The sampling um, takes place in there. And within the sampling position is also the Weybridge officer, um, Judy. And um, I don't know if you can see in that photo there with the truck and all the staff members, there's a little Weybridge hut there. So your role would be to sit in that um, Weybridge hut and um, control the data input there with the weighing the truck. So definitely indoor um, slash booth positions. Thank you. So Paula has asked, are there opportunities available to continue working with CVH once harvest ends? I can take that one. Yes, there are. So we do, we're very busy at the moment. Our harvest keep growing larger and larger. So once we inload during harvest and there's then the outloading period afterwards. So we often have many positions available after harvest that we look to hire with harvest casuals who are um, looking to continue working. Uh, so Phil has asked, can husband and wife work together on the same site? Katie? Yeah. Um, yes, Phil, so absolutely. So um, I would suggest again, just making sure you put on your application um, the details of your wife or partner, um, just so we can reconcile that to make sure that you've definitely um, got your application through to the same zone and same area, but there's no restrictions um, on family members working on site together. And Amy has just asked, can family work together? And Amy, as Katie said, there aren't any restrictions, just make sure you note it on your application. And 
you might have seen in the chat box, Emma's actually added our HR help email. So that's the email she was referring to. If your availability has changed, specifically Letitia, um, that's the email that you can direct your query to. So we'll just give it a few more moments to see if there's any other last minute questions. These are all fantastic questions. So Liz has asked, could I live in my own caravan on site at regional sites um so thanks for the question liz so yes you can take your caravan to site so most of the accommodations um provide power and stuff like that so you can hook up your caravan so definitely you can take your caravan to site we ask that you let us know as part of your application as well if you do have a caravan because then that helps us understand where we can best um allocate people essentially um, so that's that's a good call out uh, so we have another question that says do we have to provide our own transport for sites that are remote but um so um mostly yes um you will need to find your own way to site um in exceptional circumstances it might be something you'd be able to work with our team and we might be able to get someone to drop you out there um, but um, with it being very busy, our staff are very busy, so it might be hard getting you to the site, but we strongly recommend um, you finding your own way of transport to site. Just can I add something? So some sites do have public transport that go past them. So um, the Prospector, which runs up to Kalgoorlie, um, which will service some of the sites out that way. And then there are buses that run out of Perth to most um, regional towns. So you might be able to jump on that service as well. I would also maybe just add um, within your application that will be one of the questions if you have your own transport um, and in the event that you don't, as um, Luke mentioned, some of the public transport network will um, you know, get to our sites, but in a lot of cases our sites are quite remote and we, you may not know where you might be placed. So in any event, probably just discuss that with, the, um, with your contact um, at CPH throughout the process, just so we can make sure that, um, you know, if you need to be at a site where you can be accommodated by public transport or various methods, we can look at that. Bill has asked, does Narogen have a retrieval centre? Yeah. Okay. Um, yes, so that's located in our area um, 13 um, and on the CBH website you'll find a link to the map which will have all of our um, receivable sites. Any other questions? Give it a couple more moments just to make sure there's no last minute questions before we sign off. Is that no, in the Narogen Retrieval Centre is not in town, Bill. If you do live in Narogen or close to Narogen, Phil, though, there are sort of alternative options. Um, within that zone. So again, as part of your application, um, one of the questions will be when you live. Um, so we ask people to complete that if you live in a regional um, location, if you live within one of our zones, um, to just include where that is, and then we can work with you as to what might be the best option for you. Thank you. Zoe's asked a great question, which is what do you look for in a candidate? Luke oh, or Emma? <laughs> well, I think both of you. <laughs> Um, I guess from a, a HR perspective in terms of um, what we look for, <laughs> sorry, what we look for when we shortlist candidates, um, it's really just a can-do attitude. It's being prepared to work out in the conditions that are um, harvest uh, and being able and fit to, to work in that position. Um, and that's one of the things that will be identified through that medical declaration. Um, but anything additional to that is then, um, I guess, shortlisted by the site, which Luke will be able to talk to. <laughs> um, good question, Zoe. Um, so what do we look for in a candidate? I guess somebody that's enthused and um, wants to be there, someone that can work as a team, team player and make sure that the job gets done safely. And at the end of the day, everyone's 
having a good time, but everyone's going home safe to their family and their friends. Um, but other than that, I would only maybe just add to that that there's no sort of prerequisites or pre um, you know skills that you need to come to CBH with, particularly um, for harvest. So it's a good um, starting point whether you're looking to start your career um, generally or in the ag industry. Um, but by all means, you know we have a really varied workforce. Um, so you know we see candidates from sort of all um, previous careers or, or just starting out as well. And. For me, I guess, coming as a harvest casual into a full-time position, working out on site is very rewarding and it's good for the community spirit and you work with people from all different backgrounds and, and walks of life. So it's really rewarding. And yeah, we don't really have something to look for in a candidate, but yes, it, it, it's a great place to be at the end of the day. Thanks, guys. So, oh, yeah, another one. For the terminal sites that do not provide accommodation, it would be our responsibility to find accommodation or rental places nearby, question mark. Okay. Uh, yes, it would be. So for our terminals in Geraldton, Esperance um, and Albany, we don't provide accommodation. So if you predominantly, if you were to live in in those um, regional towns, it's a benefit. Otherwise, in that instance, you would need to provide your own accommodation. Um, and just a reminder that we don't at this time take um, placements for Quinana um, Port. Just checking there's no final questions. We do have another question. Oh, we've got a couple more. OK, what about the vaccination? Are you requiring four doses? So I can answer that one. So Vaccinations are not mandatory to work on our sites. However, we do strongly encourage them. Um, but as I mentioned, they are not mandatory, so you can work without a vaccination. But yes, our stance at CBH is that they are strongly encouraged. And Janice has asked, what are the roles at Forest Field? That's a really good question. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, working at Forest Field is a bit different. So um, we have two sectors that's a um, it's a bit of a segue. So we have our Australian Grain Centre, AGC at Forest Field, um, and your role there is a grain quality technician. So you're responsible for, um, and I think it's done through a separate, separate application, Emma. So that's, you'll have to keep a hunt. I'm not sure when that will be. Uh, that one is also live at the moment. Awesome. Yep, so that one is um, slightly more tailored to people with a science background. Yep, so very um, lab based um, sampling, um, yeah, sorting of samples and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. Um, and also at um, Forest Field, we have what we call grain technicians, which basically perform the same role as our plant operators, um, and they're responsible for um, sampling positions and um, receiving um, trucks on um, via road as well. Um, yeah, and I think position, positions at these places are limited, so um, just to FYI. I think yeah. that is your preference during the application process. You'll see that as Forest Field as your um, zone preference. So we have a question from Rod. Do you have the option of accommodation in town and travelling to sites? Katie? Yes. Um, so yeah, Rod, um, in a lot of cases, um, a lot of our sites, which um, if you remember on the map were those um, black dots that represented our receivable sites. So in a lot of instances, those receivable sites may just be, um, you know, either a very small town, very remote, or in some cases, um, it can just be a receivable site. Um, so in a lot of instances, accommodation would be at your next nearest site if you weren't living on our on-site accommodation. Um, we would say, though, that, you know, we try to limit the distance that people would have to travel to work um, to and from each day. So typically speaking, you know, we wouldn't like to see candidates having to travel, you know, definitely anything further than, um, you know, 50 kilometres um, as a sort of um, guide if we needed to. Thanks, Katie.
just keep waiting a moment because I have noticed that the questions do keep trickling through. So we'll just hold on just to make sure we can answer everyone's questions. No, it looks like that is all the questions. So thank you so much to everyone who has joined this evening. Thank you also to my colleagues who have um, attended this evening. Really appreciate it. We really hope that this session was useful for you and we were able to provide you some more information on what Harvest at CBH looks like. And we hope to hear from you and